you know, equity investment is not what I would be suggesting for somebody who is so, sort of in the later stages of their lives. I wouldn't. But earlier on in life, you can take you can take that risk. But of, that's not to say you put all your eggs and put them in the basket of of equity. So you can you have a portfolio, which is where financial literacy is important. Asset allocation: How much am I going to put? How much can I risk? How much you know? And risking doesn't mean just foolishly throwing it away. Take informed decisions. Okay. So these are some of the the um, investment options you the the, the top left you're it's anti-clockwise you're earning to save to invest and then when you invest you earn more because of the returns on the investments and it's a self-reinforcing cycle okay um the 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 cycle below is the other way around it's um clockwise you develop a financial plan you execute around that plan and that plan feeds into an investment plan an investment plan is a narrower plan and then you execute around the investment plan failure to execute is one of the biggest problems this is straight from brian tracy you must start you must practice you must repeat don't forget that the limiting habits you started you practiced you repeated but they're limiting habits so you've got to unwind those habits and now start with the good habits practice the good ha habits repeat the good habits and brian tracy says take action immediately another way of um overcoming limiting habits is to work with an accountability partner i understand there's about 300 members of read you can break yourselves into groups into many investment clubs, into whatever, where you are supporting each other, you're encouraging each other. You may be investing together as a group, but at least, you know, you, you give feedback to your group members. I was supposed to invest 5 million this year. I was able to do more than the 5 million. I was able to do the 5 million. I was able to do less than the 5 million. But the truth is that when you know you have to give a report, an account of your yourself in line with the, the performance indicator you had set, you would be more motivated to do something about it. So that's a suggestion I have for read. Break yourselves up into smaller groups, accountability partners, develop your plans together. Of course, each plan is distinct, but you know, you can work as a group, each one, each individual will have their own plans discuss it, advise each other. Maybe in each of the teams, you could put somebody who has more financial acumen. Um, think long-term, learn from your mistakes, celebrate short-term wins. You know, we said break up the issue into small parts so that you have milestones and you're celebrating as you're achieving them. You, you want to reduce um, social media from five, to hours to three hours a day, celebrate. Then eventually you want to get to one hour a day. But as you get, you, you know, hitting those milestones, celebrate. Be your own personal chair leader. Um, great financial habits. You have clarity around what you want because you would have gone into that thinking process in, 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 in developing a financial plan. You are able to fund the goals of, you know, that you have in life. You're able to maintain perhaps better living standards because you now have investments that are returning. You're able to outperform inflation. Inflation is, is, um, is a depreciating factor. It's, it's depreciating the value of what you, the funds that you have. You're able to deal with emergencies. You're better prepared for retirement and you live a less stressful life. Um, this is an example. I talked about the power of compounding. So 20 years, if you invest 5,000 Naira today and you're getting 5%, in 20 years time, that 5,000 is worth 2 million. Now, of course, inflation is higher than 5%. So you really don't want to go into a 5% investment because in 20 years time, if inflation is about 10%, then your money is worth less. So let's note that. But if you're if you saving, you're not going to get more than 
In fact, right now with the current situation, you may not even get 5%. So you've got to look at how you can take some more risks with maybe long-term bonds, um, with equities, but financial acumen is very important, take informed decisions. If you, if, if you invest at 20% today in 20 years time, look at what, look at what 5,000 will be worth in 20 years time at 20%, 14 million Naira. Let's go further down this schedule. If you invest 150,000 today at 20%, almost half a billion Naira. Go and test this. The power of com compounding is amazing because you're earning interest on interest on interest on interest and the cycle goes on. Now, why should you overcome these habits? They are hard to break, but failing to plan is failing, is planning to fail. It puts you at the mercy of others. I have colleagues who were far, far, far my senior in the bank when I first started banking. And, you know, as they hit retirement age, they left the institution. But these were our big orgas. And many of them, many of them will call or reach out. Can I borrow 20,000 naira? There's no food in the house. I need to pay my rent. I did, and these were, you know, high earners who didn't have a financial plan. These were bankers. So it's not about the profession. These were bankers who did not invest and were at the mercy of others. Medical bills, you know. In fact, what, what we did at one time in one of the banks I worked with was to have a, a, a mercy fund just to help some of our ex-colleagues. These, these people were earning more than we were because we hadn't reached the level that they were at the time, but they were relying. You don't want to do that to yourselves where you have to go and borrow. Begin to think about your financial plan begin to think about addressing your financial limitations because this being at the mercy of others can be the most embarrassing thing. Imagine you, you've called somebody, you say you want to borrow money, then you call the person again, they don't pick. Call again, they don't pick. Call again, they don't pick. And then of course, you know that they're avoiding you. Why do you want to do that to yourself? So you need that discipline. You need the resolve. You need to delay gratification. Nobody's saying don't find dying. Nobody's saying that. Yeah, fine dining. But what investments do you have? The fine dining should come from the returns of your investment, ideally. Even if you're going to take part of it from your salary, let it be a small part. The chunk should go after you've taken the should have expenses, so food and all of that. What are you putting in investments? It's very, very important. Your future and your stakeholders, stakeholders, your spouse, your children, your parents, and whoever else, depends on you having a strong financial plan. And you absolutely need to start now. You know, learn from this book and begin to execute. Um, Mr. Goldman is going to be talking about that. Break the bad habits, build the good habits. Change your habits, you change your life. Um, the key to success is action. That's from Brian, Brian Tracy. And the time for action is now. You take control of your finances. Otherwise, your finances will control you. You need to eat that fog right now. You have a choice. Nobody can force you. But your future depends on it. Thank you very much and God bless. Oh, wow. Need I say much? Thank you so much, Mrs. Bimbola Rice. That 
that was timely. And um, well, most of the time when words like this come from people, we tend to just um, make um, light of them. But it's coming from a professional who has more than 30 years experience in the financial circle, then it means it is coming from a distance of experience, knowledge, and technical know-how. So it's not just one of those things that was said on the surface for us just here for MC. So Mas, sincerely, I'm delighted to listening and to jotting some things down. So I was just following and let me see where this will end. And sincerely, I must say that was an eye opener. And a lot of us meant about savings, the difference. Something that she said that me is this. He said, most people that you see spend big money. The rates on investments is what they use to cater for their luxury life. So the question or what I'm trying to individualize is this, watch the person you are competing with. Don't use a salary to compete with somebody that is paying profit. Yes, somebody is using profit. I can your salary to buy the same car. Oh, the overbearing effect, we have effects on much on us differently. And I used to say this to my people or to anybody that I see, whatever thing you can't avoid, you can't afford two of, you can't afford it at all. If you can't buy two of a commodity, you can buy it comfortably with your own money. You can't afford it. If it's just one, everything is on there. You can't afford it. So thank you so much, and God bless you. And sincerely, I want to say this. If you have any questions, I don't miss being Bola, right? Just, you can signify, if you would like to speak in person, just signify by raising your hand. I will call us in person. But if you are too shy that we can't even see your face and you still don't want to speak, just write a question. You can direct it to me or you can make everybody see it. So, okay, the first person I'm seeing, judging by what I see here, is, um, oh my God, I don't know how to pronounce this name, but I'm just going to pronounce it. I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's what I saw. Mo. Oh, Holy Spirit is helping me. Um, okay, Mr. Jackson or Mrs. Jackson. I don't know your gender as so, well, but Moti Dem Jackson. You are the first person I'm saying. So you can ask a question. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you so much for um, speaking to us today. Please, ma'am, can you just throw more light on equity investment? Because you touched briefly on it, I think, I really need a more um, enlightenment on that part because I, I guess that's that's one thing I need to go into as of now. Thank you so much. All right, um, thank you. As I said, on, unfortunately, it's not um, it's not a technical session, but in a nutshell, um, equity investments is it's buying a portion of a company. So if you have if you have um, the shares, it's shares. If you have the shares of First Bank, for example, um, it means that you own part of First Bank to the extent of your, of your shares. And what happens with equity investments, two things. One, it appreciates in price, but it can also go the other way. That's why I said it's a higher risk investment. But, you know, it appreciates in price and you can get dividend payments. Some a guarantee trust bank, for example, pays dividend twice a year, right? So, um, and the, sh you, the shares, they can be publicly quoted shares or their private shares. It's, you know, you can invest in your friend's business, for example. They don't, it, the shares don't have to be quoted on the stock exchange. So your friend is setting up a business, you can decide to be an investor, you're holding, part of that of the company you, you own part of the company um so but it, it's in in terms of equity investments if you're not if you're not a, if you're not financially literate then you need to speak to somebody who understands because you can you can invest in a company that you know can blow up right now yes would i invest in a in a, in a GT bank, yes. Would I invest in a, in a first bank? Yes. And, so, and, 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 other, and other banks. But your, remember this, 
your investments are long-term. So you're not buying equity in First Bank today and you want to sell tomorrow because the price can go down tomorrow. But over the long term, it would tend to appreciate, but it ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. But, it, you know, the, the trend is upwards. You cannot do short term. You can't have a short term view on equities. It must be a long term view. I hope that helps. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. All right, Mr. Jackson, thank you and thank you. And I also hope Mrs. Abimbola has been able to do justice to your question. All right, the next question I'm saying is from Mrs. Dami or Mr. Aldo, I would, okay, Dami Fowler. What is your opinion on high risk, on very high risk investments? What is your opinion on very high risk invest, investments? Did you hear that, ma'am? Sorry, I was, having I was having challenges on muting. Okay, so Dami Fowler is my daughter. Um, and yes, she, she, she is very investment aggressive. So I'm not surprised to get that question from her. Um, again, it depends. I would not advise somebody who is in their 60s and above to get into any high risk investments because what is the high risk about? You can make a lot of money, but you can also lose the money. So it depends on, but if, if even at the age of 60, you have more than enough, then that excess you can put into high risk, okay? The ability to, to take on high risk investments um, is, is higher when you're younger is higher when you have excess funds. So it, it, it depends on personal circumstances. The only thing I would say about high-risk investments, you have to be careful because you, you don't want to be gambling with your money. So you have to understand what it is that you're investing in. I mean, if, if somebody is starting up a company, especially, let's, let's take some of the... Um, the technology startups, okay? Very high risk because they're disrupting entire industries. It may not work. And may, indeed, many of them failed. But the upside is that you can make a moonshot. You can make a heck of a lot of money. So you, you have to understand who, are the, who is developing this? What have they done before? Um, what's the integrity, what is, you know, many, many questions. High risk, you, it's better to be advised and guided by an expert who can read numbers, who, you know, has a better understanding of investments. If you're not, if you're not a financial expert, I would be careful about high risk investments. Well, or rather very high risk investments. All right, thank you so much, Ma. Um, and I'm so sure, much more than the financial aspect and um, um, brain behind what our speaker has been talking about. She was being specific about the age, and I think that also has to do with health. So if you're more than 60, please, if the investment has high risk, please. If you're more than 60, she was being specific, please. If you're more than a particular age, much more than the financial um downtown or going south that you may experience your health as well that's some way that is a way you actually respond to a particular situation that you to not be able to be in. so please that's just a critical advice from our speaker and the next question i have investment with a fair interest rate any advice on that how can one identify viable investment with a fair interest rate Can you hear me? Can yes, hear me? yes, I can. Okay, all right. I, I don't know what's been a yes, challenge yes. from you. All right. So, hmm. the interest rates is um, that they're fixed income. 
Okay, so you have, that means you get regular income. So things like um, fixed deposit accounts, even your savings accounts in the bank, um, treasury bills, which is a government um, security, that's very safe. Bonds, you can have bonds um, issued by the government, government bonds or issued by companies. You have commercial papers, which are is issued by companies. These are examples of interest rate linked investments. Equities are not interest rates linked. You get a dividend, but there's no, you, you won't say that you bought 10 shares of First Bank, they're going to pay you X amount. It depends on how much they have made and how much they're ready to declare as dividend. So you can get on the 10 shares, you can get 1,000 Naira this year, you can get 500 Naira. The next year, you can get 5,000 Naira. That's not fixed. But when it's interest rates, it is fixed. The only challenge with that is that the, the rate of return is lower because you're taking less risk. There's always a risk return um, relationship. You're taking less risk. So you are not going to be earning as much. Now, about eight, 10 years ago, treasury bills were delivering up to 17%. And when you now, comp you know, the power of compounding, the actual yield was about 21%. But now it came all the way down to 2%, the low single digits, 2%, 3% it's gone back up a bit right so that's the challenge with um investment now if you want if you want you said a viable rate again i don't you know i don't know your circumstances but i would say a longer term investment so perhaps take a 10 year um invest in a 10 year bond which you could you could get i don't know 10% 11% now rather than going to treasury bills, which are short term. Treasury bills mature, you have the one year treasury bills, you have the six month treasury bills, you have the um, 90 day treasury bills. And for usually the, the longer the um, tenor, usually the higher the interest that you will get. Usually it doesn't always work 100% that way because sometimes the expectations could be that interest rates will fall. So the long-term investments will deliver a lower rate. But usually, rule of thumb, the longer the tenor, the higher the rate. So if you, can, if you can put your investment for 10 years, and you see 10 years doesn't even have to be 10 years. If the price, if, if you invest in a, in a bond today and interest rates come down, the value of your bond goes up. So you can actually sell and make, um, you know, get capital appreciation. It, it's technical. So, you know, I, I could spend I could spend three days discussing the different um, um, asset classes, the different investment options. It's, it's technical, but it's something that you can learn. I, I don't I do, I'm not an accountant. I'm not. My first degree is human biology. My second degree is international relations. But here I am a banker dealing with, you know, uh, I did wealth management, uh, private banking, but also corporate banking. So I was lending billions to customers. I learned, I learned over the years, courses, programs, the, uh, and, you know, mentoring, coach people, get, I would get a coach. So I'm not an accountant, but I understand numbers very, very well. Oh, wow. Thank you so, so much. And thank you for that sincerity and for a lot of us where the limiting factor upon us is that where I'm now, when I studied this and that, she understood it more than I do all of this. It means that whatever thing your back, whatever your background is academically, that's nothing to do about understanding numbers. Absolutely. So please, and Absolutely. you should know what to work for you as well, you know what works for you. Because a friend is starting an investment plan with a particular figure, the friend is that you must see that same figure as well. Just know what works for you. Um, sincerely want to say, we appreciate my Mrs. Dean Bola, right? We are, it is of utmost pleasure for myself personally to say, it's nice to think of the wisdom just out tonight. You made it so simple and we really appreciate it. We are so sorry if we wouldn't be able to take most of your all the questions. So 
right about now we'll be taking the profile of the second speaker just before we go there and after that after the next video that we'll be playing the second speaker will be coming up just to give us a conclusion please stay back relax and enjoy yourself wow wow as in like i know the chat room has been hot now were you seeing the chat room can we make it hotter i was just saying wow 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 and one of the big pleasure for me was watching you do your thing you you, you just love what you do you know and i think that's what me why i was saying you made it so simple because you just love it you spoken for over an hour and you just kept repeating like we need three days so i'm like <laughs> this is it <laughs> please for those of us in the chat room Kika will be dropping a link now she spoke very much about how this is a very broad topic and that is true next month webinar you don't want to miss it next month webinar would be going more technical we are having technical people in the house that will be breaking this down so if you've been following us you see that it's layers upon layers precept upon precept that's how we've been taking it now we cannot thank you enough uh, the link is in the chat room if you want to be informed or for those of us that are joining us for the first time if you want to be informed of our uh, programs as it's coming up please fill the chat we don't want to be plugging your mailbox or necessarily so we need you to indicate that you want to be informed ma i was as in a written overwritten i don't want to take more of our time but one major take home for me, I think probably because it's been a very forward thing I've been thinking about is, why is it that people don't retire early? And you, you so nailed it. Poor planning, you are not too young to think about your retirement. The time to think of your retirement is now that you just got a job because you will retire. And that just brought it home for me. I remember in one of the conversations we had, you said something that I was like, why did I do this thing before now? Like, I felt like I was just gone. Thank you so, so very much, man. So please, for, for all of me. us, I'll be sharing my screen now. And I'll be sharing the profile for both speakers. Can we see it? Bimbola Wright is a transformative and human-centered professional with 33 years banking experience in leading financial institutions, over 20 years of which was at senior leadership levels. She is currently an executive director with Wright & Co Limited, a management consulting firm based in Lagos. Her career commenced with NAL Bank PLC, now part of Sterling Bank, from where she moved to Kakawa Discount House which was later acquired by First Bank Holdings to become FBN Quest Merchant Bank. A former executive council member of Women in Management, Business and Public Services, WIMBIZ, Bimbola has served on various NGO and private sector boards. In Wright & Co Limited, Bimbola actively promotes business development activities and works with the team to deliver tailored solutions that address specific needs of clients. She is currently the chairperson of the board of Arami Essentials, sits on other boards including Ecobank Nigeria. Arm Securities, IOD Center for Corporate Governance. Bimbola is a fellow of the Nigeria Institute of Management and a member of the Institute of Directors. She holds a BSc in Human Biology from Surrey University, an MA in International Relations from University of Kent at Canterbury and has attended various executive management programs at notable institutions including Harvard, Wharton and London Business School. Bimbola is married with three children and a grandchild. Mr. Alex Goma Managing Director, CEO. Grand Cereals Limited, a UAC company. Mr. Alex Goma is an experienced business leader with over 30 years experience building people, customers and brands from P&G, British American Tobacco, Guinness, PZ Cussins and now Grand Cereals in Africa.
Prior to his current role, he has held various roles such as Managing Director PZ Cussons Consumer SBU, Strategy and External Affairs Director PZ Cussons Nigeria, Sales Director Guinness Nigeria, Head of Trade Marketing and Distribution BAT Nigeria, BAT Country Manager Senegal, Gambia and Mauritania, District Manager P&G Ghana, North and West Nigeria, Customer Marketing MGR P&G Nigeria and Fabric Care Customer Marketing Manager P&G Egypt. He holds a degree in biochemistry from the University of Port Harcourt and an LLB degree from the University of London International Programs. He is a fellow of the National Institute of Marketing of Nigeria. He is a member advisory board of edusco.com, advisory board of AMT Digital, non-executive director of Litramed Publications Publishers of Lantern Books. He speaks in a number of public fora with a focus on leadership, personal development, business strategy, sales and marketing strategy and execution. Muiwa Kolade is a graduate of the Federal University of Technology Akure. He is a trained plant pathologist but currently in the NGO space as an advocate and campaigner against sexual and gender-based violence, SGBV, harmful practices, HP, and violence against women and girls, VAWG. He is a specialist and consultant for local and national NGOs on case management, psychosocial support and assertiveness. He is a Christian and lover of art. He's performed on big stages with the best and most notable spoken word artists in Nigeria painting real-life issues and using human mind as a canvas. He's a lover of sport and ardent supporter of Manchester United with vast experience in football punditry and analysis. Okay, so without wasting any more of our time, we key clap. Can you can I do the clap in the chat room as we welcome Mr. Alex Goma? Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, once again, it's my pleasure to um, share with you talking about disciplined execution. Um, if you just allow me, can I share my screen now? Yes, sir. Okay. Please go ahead. Just hold on one minute. Yep. So what I'm going to do is just um, talk through what is execution, um, why is it important, what are the things that you have to consider when you execute. I have just a few slides. Uh, I'd like to leave us to go through the principles, and then I think we can have room for quite a large I mean, number of questions at the end. But really, what is execution? For me, I say simply making things happen. And I have a picture of a book, it's one of the best books I've read when it comes to execution, read, written by Bosidi and Ramcharam. Basically it says execution, the discipline of getting things done. The biggest difference between why a lot of companies do well and the others is actually about execution. You know, there are lots of people who think that everything is about strategy, okay? The strategy is right, the strategy is right, the strategy, no. Strategy is 80%, 90% execution. So what I always challenge people who come to work in our business, the first one of the first tasks I ask them to do is go open the websites of all the big companies, right? And look at what they write, uh, their vision, their values, their purpose, their strategy. Virtually everyone is the same. It's just different words, right? Every company says we want to serve the consumers best. Every company says we want to offer the best quality. Every company says we want to offer the best value. Every company says we, we plan to be the best employer, right? We will create the best environment for people who will deliver the best returns for our customers, for our shareholders. Why then do some do it well and others not do it? as well as the others. And this is a quote I like from uh, Bosidi and Charam. 
what they said simply, the difference between a company and its competitor is the ability to execute. If your competitors are executing better than you, they are beating you. So one of the things I always remind my team is the fact that as we sit in a strategy room, as we sit in a boardroom trying to work out strategy, our competitors are also sitting down in another room doing the same thing. The difference will be the team that executes what it says it will do. And you do it with a lot of focus and you do it well. You cannot pray yourself into success. You cannot also pray your competitor into failure. Because if your competitor works hard at getting the things right, the competitor will always be ahead of you. So, and one of the challenges why a lot of strategies fail is because in developing the strategies, people do not think of how they will be executed. So from the onset, the design is faulty and then the outcome is very, very faulty. So it's critical to understand that as you build strategy, as you try to build your business, as you try to build a strategy for your career, you've got to think of how it's going to be executed in building that. You've got to think of your context. You've got to think of the circumstances for you to be able to do that. If you don't do that, what you're going to have is something that looks very nice on paper. And when it comes to the time for you to make it happen, you find out that you all the constraints and everything starts to uh, come out of the woodwork. And then you're wondering why you cannot execute. So it's critical to understand that you beat others by focusing on beating your previous record. So the better you get at what you do, the more the odds and the chances are that you will beat the other people that are competing in the same market. And what we find between what people want to achieve or businesses, companies, individuals, and the reality that they face is what I will say is the execution gap. So we all have big dreams. We have these big businesses we want to build. We have these noble ideas. We have this great career we want to develop, right? The challenge between that and what we find is the execution gap because it takes a lot of a series of steps for that goal, that objective to become reality. It doesn't happen by chance. It doesn't happen by chance. So I think it's something that we've got to understand and put that at the back of our mind. So, and one of the key areas why most people fail is they don't actually start with the end in mind. They just start doing. People think execution is just do it. Sometimes we have bosses, so some of you might be leaders who are leading people, and some of you might have leaders who say, all I care about is the results. I don't care about the how. You have to, because if you don't care about that, then that's abdication of leadership or abdication of responsibility. It is how results are delivered and delivered on a sustainable basis continually that creates huge returns and make businesses big. So businesses turn processes into habits, just the same way individuals have habits. It becomes a way of life, and that's why a company is noted for excellence, because they are able to drive and do things in a consistent manner. So when people say, all I care about is the results, I see a pathway to failure, because you will not be able to replicate if you don't know how your results were obtained. If you don't challenge, sometimes we have fantastic results and it's not because of us, it's despite us. And we base the future based on those fantastic results, but we have not really, and it was fortune that, that smiled on us. So you're not able to replicate it because fortune will not always smile on you. If you want to make sure you can replicate it, you've got to build the habit of doing the right things, doing them well, and doing them over and over and over until it becomes second nature. Why is it critical to understand the end and the what and the why? Because sometimes as you go through executing stuff, you will find out that some situations will change. 
So I've seen a lot of people, when you give them tasks to do, they, exit, they, they do a shoddy job. And the reason why they do a shoddy job is not because they don't have the skill to do the job, they simply didn't ask why. So when they face challenges and when some difficulties come up, they are not able to cost correct or adapt because they're just fixated on the task. I was told to go and do this. Why were you told to go and do this? It's a very simple, simple example. You know what, go and buy me a sachet of detergent. If you understand why, or I, I say, go and buy me a sachet of aerial, go and buy me a sachet of clean. If you understand why, when you get to where you're supposed to buy, and you can't find clean, but for example, there's maybe Omo or something else, you have a chance to make a choice and a decision if you understand why. If I said I wanted to wash whites and that's, that's why I asked for a particular one, you can then have the latitude to decide that, you know what, I will get another sachet, but I must get one that has to deal with whites because this is what I understand it is meant for. So it's critical for us to understand that this thing affects us as individuals, it affects us as companies. Some of us want to go to school. The question is why? Some people think, okay, if I go get a second degree, I get a third degree, okay, I'm going to get that job I am not getting yet. Is it really true? Is that the, is that, is that the experience, is that what operates? I want to run business because I'm struggling to survive. I need to make money. Is that what will make your business different from any other business? So why do a lot of businesses start up? And in a short while, I've seen a lot of people jump into entrepreneurship and within one or two years, they're coming back. They want to do a paid job. They did not understand what they were trying to do. Why was not very, very clear and strong to them. So when they face headwinds, the easiest thing is to jump and go back. Because if you understand the why, you will then start looking at the building blocks. What does it take for me to set up a business? Do I have the resources to survive for two years whilst the business is still growing up like a baby? Businesses are like babies. They need to be fed well so that their roots are established and then they will grow to become large businesses. If they're not, they will be malnourished and guess what? You can run your business for a number of years. It will still remain a very tiny business because it has never been fed or made to have the right foundation. And there's nothing wrong with starting small. A lot of the global and big businesses you have today started very small, but they knew where they were going, they knew why, and they put all the building blocks so that those businesses became scalable. A simple example I like to use for people is when you try, when you want to build a house. If you have the mindset that I want to build a hundred story building, your foundation is going to go deep into the ground. And at the end of the foundation, you may have just enough funds to do one story. Now with the amount of money you spend on the foundation, somebody can put up a five story building. And everybody thinks, okay, this person is ahead or this person has made more progress. No, for you to build your 100 story building, your foundation might have needed to go five floors down. It is only when you start to pile the floors on top that people will now start to realize that, wow, this is going to be a 100 story building. But if you had a 100 story building in mind and you built a foundation for two-story building because you felt you only had money for two-story building. When you need to go above that, two things can either happen. Either your building will crash or you have to dig up the whole building again and reset another foundation for you to be able to go there. So it is critical to understand why because it, make, it helps you make some of the right choices as you start to think about your execution. Now, there are a couple of things, and I'm just going to take each one of them bit by bit, that is critical for execution. There are a couple of factors that are critical, a couple of disciplines you have to be good at. The first thing is around leadership. 
there's no brilliant execution if you don't have personal leadership. At the heart of any execution is your leadership behavior. Do you have a personal accountability for results? Do you take ownership for results, for outcomes that you have to deliver? If you don't have that mindset, it's always going to be difficult for you to execute brilliantly. Because you always give yourself a get out of jail card. You always have a thousand and one excuses as to why it cannot happen. The simplest example I can use is traffic and Lagos. You know, I see people who say, oh, okay, I'm late for a meeting, I'm late for this because of traffic. And I said, it's uh, bollocks. We've lived in Lagos and everybody knows that there's traffic. So I've had to, I had a meeting at a co-hotel uh, once when I was in Lagos. I left my office at um, Obakran. The meeting was supposed to be for one o'clock. I left my office by um, 11 o'clock. By 12 o'clock, I had not gotten to seven up because there was a huge holdup. I called my driver. I just told him, I said, you know what? Wherever you meet me, you'll catch me up. And I hopped on a bike. I just asked the bike man, how much to get to VI Eco Hotel? So from seven up at Ojota to Eco Hotel. Why? I was particular about ensuring I was there on time. I wasn't worried about people who say, oh, this guy is sales director for Guinness and he's on a bike or whatever. No. I had a re I had I have a personal this thing that if I say it's eight o'clock, then it's eight o'clock. Accountability starts with the small things. If you're faithful with the small things, you will be with the large things. So you have to take it upon yourself that if I commit to something, then I must deliver. So number one, that's the first thing. The second thing is that as you're developing your plan or your strategy or whatever you want to do, you've got to break it down to operational detail. You don't say, you know what, I've designed this thing, it looks okay. No. How will it be delivered? In one of my previous roles, you know, I just took upon the role and I was trying to see what my team um, will do in customer marketing. So I, I, I asked the guys, it was December, um, 1st of December, I said, look, I want us to be able to run a promo for consumers and I want that promo in market by December 14th. And the guys came to me two days later with a plan that showed that we were going to launch a promo by December 14th. So they thought I was going to accept it. And I said, okay, sit down. Yes, so now I want us to go through the building blocks. How are you going to run this promo? Do you have an agency on ground? Yes, there's an agency. Do the agency have the staff ready? Well, they have some supervisors, but they have to hire the actual people who will do that. How long does it take them to hire if you want the best people? Okay, in one week they can do that because they have people that they've been using before. So we write it down one week. When they hire, because your promo is a very different um, activity from what they've done before, do you need to train your, the people? Yes, we need to train the people. How long will it take for you to train the people? Okay, one week. The materials you're going to use for the promo, where are the materials located? They're located in Lagos. How many cities are we covering? So what's the lead time for us to be able to cover all those cities? Again, between one to two weeks, depending on where they are. So by the time we broke it down, what it was showing me was that we're only going to be able to do that promotion by the second week of January. So I asked them the question, why did you tell me you could do it by December 14? It was because I asked for December 14. But I wanted you guys to think what I was expecting you guys. I knew you will not be able to do it by December 14. I wanted you to come back to me with two things. Either to say, Alex, uh, you've given us this task, looking at the breakdown and everything, if you want it to happen by December 14th, you will have to pay three times the cost. And these are the reasons why. We will have to freight, we will have to do this to get the materials on time. We'll have to pay over the odds to get people who already understand what we're trying to do 
rather than train people from the scratch. And even at that, we're risking the quality of this. Or if we follow the steps, the earliest we can do is by the second week of January. So if we want a promo, we can do a stream down promo. We run it only in Lagos and one of the other key cities, we can do it by December the 14th. That's what I was expecting from you guys. So you've got to break down strategy into the building blocks for you to see whether it's possible or not. If you are leading the team and if you're the person who is uh, being led, you've got to also build the capacity to be able to do that. And then, of course, you've got to have a mindset of always sharing and celebrating success, no matter how minute, every small milestone that is achieved, because that's what encourages and gives more energy to the team and gets you towards the kind of behavior. What you celebrate and reward is what will be reinforced. So you've got to celebrate the behaviors that ensure that you can have repeated um, success. So leadership behaviors are the foundation of brilliant execution. If you don't have personal leadership, if you don't have the courage to stand up for what you think or you believe, if you don't have the courage for you to be able to stand up to your team and push them and help them, guide them, right? If you don't have the courage to take responsibility and accountability for the results that they're delivering, therefore you're involved in that, it will be tough for you to be able to drive execution. Beyond the, 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 the leadership behaviors, you need discipline planning, which means you've got to understand the resources that are at your disposal. You've got to be able to prioritize. For you to do that, you've got to be able to break down step-by-step step all the key actions. What are the steps that need to be done? Which ones are the most critical? You've got to understand which ones are the most critical and which ones are the rate limiting steps. This help you therefore to say, okay, this is where I'm going to put focus and you can match your resources with the kind of results that you want to have. And by breaking it down to this level, you're able to focus yourself and your team. And actually you can just simplify the actions for them because it becomes very simple. They say to eat an elephant, you have to eat it bit by bit. You know, if you want to devour an elephant, you start by bit by bit. If you focus on the size of the elephant, you will never break it down. You'll never feel that you're going to be able to consume that. You've got to look for the connections and interdependencies with other functions, with other businesses, with other people that can make or mar your plans and create the linkages and create the opportunities for the interactions for these things to happen. You know, sometimes the guys in one function, okay, marketing guys will wake up overnight. Oh, they have this fantastic idea. They put a proposal uh, in front of them. Okay, they want to execute it immediately and they have not spoken with the guys in supply chain. So they come in with this fantastic idea. You know what, we're going to save the world. We're going to save the company. And we've, we've asked the guys to come back with a plan that will help us save the year. And the year is going to end in December. Meanwhile, you've come with a very fantastic plan on paper without taking into consideration supply chain lead times. Do we have the capacity? Do we have the capability? Do we have the materials? How long will it take us to move? And so we've spent two weeks building a plan that cannot work because we have not looked at the connections internally or connections with other functions that allow you to do that. So again, it's just breaking the things down simply bit by bit, finding the things that are connected because if one job is not done, you cannot move to the others. Those are the critical steps you have to watch out for. And everything is then measured. So once you have the mindset of planning, discipline planning, all right? Ensuring that you break down everything into tasks, you find that things start to become easier. And it starts with your day. You know, when you wake up uh, at the start of each day, what do you have in mind? Okay, I want to go to school, right? What will it take for you to go to school? Or I want to work in this company. What do they require? Okay, they require that people must get an average of 90% in their test scores. So how are you going to get it? How much time would you spend practicing, rehearsing, 
ensuring that you are prepared when the time comes. I have three weeks to do that. So how many hours are you going to focus? What are the things you're going to prioritize? What are the things you're going to drop? So discipline planning is critical for brilliant execution. And then it's how you execute. Again, link to personal accountability is around keeping promises. Do you keep promises? Or do you find it easy to say, you know what? Don't worry, they will understand. One of the challenges we have is that we find it difficult to hold people to account for promises they have made because we want to be liked. And guess what? When you start doing that, you actually find out that you start to create excuses for your own self because what you tolerate is what you will become. So if you start with yourself and you hold yourself to account for promises that you made, what you'll find is that you will be able to hold others to account for the same thing. If you start to let others go, gradually your own standards will start to fall. So before you make promises, have you broken down step by step? Have you found out what it would take for you to do that before you make the promise? So whenever my boss asks me to do something uh, early in my career and growing on, whatever, I ask you why do you need it, first of all, and I ask you when do you need it. And then I'll do the breakdown. I'll come back to you and tell you that if you want it, so, 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 date, then what are the other things that you've asked me to do that will drop in priority? Or I tell you that I'm working on this, 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 and therefore you will not get it on so, 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 date. It is better for you to promise and deliver early than for you to promise because you really felt that you could do that and fail to deliver and give excuses. Because once you do it once, twice, three times, what becomes clear, people start to look at you as somebody who cannot keep to their promises. There might be instances where, you know what, you have broken things down and these things cannot work because things are going awry. Let your line manager or the people that you're working with or the customer you're serving know ahead of time so that they can cost correct. If they have other options, they can apply. Bad news is not wine. It doesn't get better with age. It is better to share bad news upfront so that people understand and therefore they can make choices. It's no use telling me that you can't hit your target on the 30th of October because of X pro, uh, problem, because there's nothing I can do. If you told me a week ago, I could have asked one other region, one other division, whether they can do a bit more than they're doing so that we can find a way. But telling me on the 30th, there's nothing I can do. So bad news doesn't get better with age. So promises made, promises kept. Activation has to be done with measurement. Whatever you don't measure does not happen. So all those steps that you put, you've got to have clarity about how will you know it's been done? How will we know we have been successful? So again, most times when I have to sit with my guys in a meeting and I said, guys, first of all, before we start, what are the outcomes we are looking for? Can we write them down? And how will we know we have delivered these outcomes or we are this? So that way we start to measure. So we will be responsible for that. And that way you can start to deal with those things. If you don't measure, you won't be able to uh, manage the success of your activation. And you've got to focus on the things that matter most. You see those places where you have connections or interdependencies? It is critical to measure each step because then you know in advance whether something that is critical, if one of those rate limiting steps or critical steps goes missing, it can derail your, your project. So measure what matters most. There are some things you can give up on and say, you know what, okay, it doesn't matter. This is not going to affect the launch of our product. This is not going to affect the delivery of this project. 
You've got to build the ability to confront facts and cause correct. So that's why it's critical for you to measure. If you see things that things are not going on, challenge them now and call a crisis to find out how we can resolve. We don't hope and pray with faith that these things will happen, no. What is within our control? So let's confront the facts. What I notice in a lot of instances, a lot of people don't like to challenge their colleagues. You know something is going wrong. You know that they've not given you the answers. Well, we're trying to be nice. We don't want to be hated. Um, if I go and say this person has not delivered on his part, that's why I can't deliver on my own. They will say I'm the one trying to suck him. No. Why are you guilty for something you have not done wrong? So it takes a lot of courage for you to execute. It takes a lot of courage for you to hold people to account. And like I said, at each step, you've got to value and celebrate success. So break the things into tiny milestones. And as you hit each one, you celebrate. And you, you, know, you draw energy from it. Because sometimes, some of the things you're doing might not show up. It's like building the 100-story building. Whilst you're pouring concrete into the foundation, right? There's no sign because you're still below the ground. But we know that we have to pour concrete for one day. The concrete has to step, uh, set. We measure the concrete as a set. Okay, set within two days, tick. Celebrate this is done. Okay, we're acquiring this done. Celebrate this is done. Every single thing. So I know you guys are a reading club. And sometimes you, you read a lot of books. There's a simple tool I use for myself when I read. And the simple thing is I say, okay, after reading a book, I must summarize the book in one page, not more than one page. And the page broken down into a couple of sessions. The first section is what is the book all about? Second section is what are the key lessons and take out from it? Third section is as a result of these key lessons, what, I, what is one thing I will stop doing? What is one thing I will start doing? What is one thing that I will continue to do? If you do that, you will turn your knowledge into skill because you're applying the things that you have. And you can actually measure and say, okay, how long will it take me to do this? This is how long it will take me to do this. And how will I know that I've mastered? It? And then you can take up something else and you can take up something else. else you know what, you just read quite a large number of books, you will forget a lot of them, and you may not take the lessons that you require out of them. So you can actually apply these principles to yourself. It's not only about businesses, it's how you live your day-to-day -day life, it's how you apply yourself in reaching the goals that you've set out for yourself. So just to summarize, execution is simply making things happen. And the difference between two competitors is the ability to execute. The ones who execute what they plan well are the ones who do well. There's no strategy that is new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. We only see a different manifestation of whatever we, uh, we had before. Your mobile phone today was the talking drum 200 years ago. It's just technology that has made it easier for us to activate. Your iPod today was the gramophone of 100 years ago, was a cassette recorder, and then it became the Walkman and then became the iPod. The simple thing was I wanted mobile music. People had mobile music, and all they did was they dealt with the constraints. So there's nothing new under the sun. It's just your ability to execute the things that you say you're going to do. Brilliant execution starts with understanding the what, what are we trying to do and why. It is from there you can then say, okay, this is now the breakdown of all the various tasks that you want to do. And execution requires leadership behaviors. It starts with personal leadership. If you don't have personal accountability for delivery of results or keeping up to your promises, you will not be able to execute brilliantly. And it also requires discipline planning, breaking things down into these tiny building blocks, and then in executing, 
understanding the milestones and the steps and measurement of what you're doing. If you're able to do that, you'll find out that more often than not, you will always be successful. What are the things within your control? That's what disciplined execution forces you to focus on. A lot of us focus on the things that are outside of our control, and therefore we have excuses and we can blame others for why things have not happened to us or why some things are not working for us, right? So if you're able to ensure that you build yourself, you plan properly, and you ensure that you apply the discipline of measuring everything that you do, you'll be amazed at the kind of results that you guys will deliver. So thank you for your attention. And if you have questions, I'm willing to take them. Wow. Wow. As in the chat room is already buzzing and buzzing. I was just writing and writing and writing. Thank you so very much. So that was absolutely amazing. Okay, Mui, while you're still here, I was. Yes. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much, Mr. Uh, Alexander Goma. If there is something that stands out for me in your presentation, it is the simplicity, attention to detail in breaking down complex matter and making it look so simple. This is also to also confirm it to us that in our small world, or if you call it a big world, it is not in it is not in the it is not in what people call you or it is not being addressed by distinguished that actually makes some men distinguished it is in the value the, the value system the knowledge the things they know that makes them different from others and as a matter of fact a lot of people can do a lot of things but there is something about a person that makes them distinguished and make them peculiar from others like tonight you you made you you created another form of leadership talk to us and it's it's so it's so it's so you made it so simple and for me now something that stands out for me is this it is not that you are put on that table that you become a leader wherever you find yourself start acting the way you will be in your dream seat yeah wherever you are now start acting and positioning yourself well here wherever you are now as if you were at the position you always invested to see yourself. Thank you so much. And um, I, I know that a lot of people, they may, not write, they may not be writing it out now, but I know a lot of people have learned, a lot of people have jotted, like Mrs. Um, Tumini Nadipod was saying, she, she, she came up and the first thing was trying to let us know how much she has jotted. And I know it's not just about her, a lot of people have done that. Myself too, I, I couldn't, that's the kind of lecture that doesn't even get people. As long or as brief as it was, you, you don't want to sleep under it. It's engaging, it's challenging, and all of that. That's, that's what I call a balanced diet. Thank you for feeding us with the right meal this evening, and I sincerely appreciate it. And if we, if we have any question like we did for the first speaker, want to direct it directly to our speaker, please, can you just write it in the chat room or just direct them to me? I will read them out. Or if you wouldn't mind, maybe you want to ask in person, can you just raise your hand using the emoji that's raised and just to ask your question? But I will appreciate it if you will just write it in the chat room so that we can just read it and our speaker can can just um, pick it up from there if you have any question on leadership on your role and uh, and and something also that that that's that's also stand out for me is this that when your competitors outdo you in whatever um planning you want to execute it means that you have actually failed because as you're making your strategies they are also making their own strategies so this life it is just competitive so you must bring out something that is different about you that people will see and they will embrace you and they will love you for who you are not just because you, they want to see your faith but because of something different that is valuable that you are bringing to table so like i said if you have any question please all right i'm seeing one in the chat room and this one is directed to our speaker because considering that a lot of youths are forced into entrepreneurship because they can't get a job and are failing from business to business. What will you advise? Well, the president once said that there is no federal government job for anybody again. 
not even our state, not even our local government. So consider that a lot of youth are forced into entrepreneurship because they can't get a job now and they are failing from business to business. So, sir, what is your candid advice to every youth out there? I think for me, the, 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 the first thing is the understanding and the debates between entrepreneurship and jobs, because I think if you, if we understand certain things around money, it will probably help. So if you go back to the basic definition of money, money is just a store of value and means of exchange of value. So I, I, don't, I don't like separating, uh, I say whether you're an entrepreneur or you work for somebody, you're going, you're working. Right. And I think it's critical that we understand that if you are an entrepreneur, you work for a company that you own. If you are an employee, you work for a company that work that somebody else owns. But you've got to understand you're either entrepreneur or employee, you're working for a company. Why is this understanding critical? Because the company is separate from self and it's for a reason. Uh, the way it's set up in law and whatever, for the company to have a life of its own. So you set up a company with the right principles and the right mindsets and the companies are run. I can't, even though I'm MD or Grand Series, decide I want to do anything. Now, if I open Alex Goma and Co and I operate with a mindset I can do anything I like, Alex Goma and Co is likely going to fail. So if I open Alex Goma and Co, I'm going to run it exactly as if I'm running Grand Serious today. It's a separate company with a clear sets of rules. What that, that then does, it allows you to build the right kind of focus. So the thing is around value creation. If you work for somebody, it's because you're creating value, you're helping them create value somewhere. That's where, where you get the reward. You get reward dead two ways. One is you get rewarded in money, salaries that you're paid, the second is you get rewarded in skill or experience that you build, which can become working capital for you. So if you go and look at the history of most entrepreneurs and the people who have been most successful, more than 70% of the successful people are in their mid thirties, forties. They've had experience somewhere working for someone, either they're frustrated with the system not being fast enough for them, or they had bigger ideas, but they built on what they had to become entrepreneurs. So it's the foundation for those guys who don't have jobs today, if you're going to set up a company, are you thinking of the, what's the problem I'm trying to solve? And how can I solve this problem at scale? Because if you think of your company from that perspective, you will find out that you can actually grow. What's the difference between Mamari who sells rice at the junction and Sweet Sensation? They all sell rice. They all buy the rice meat from the same market, just the fact that one has set up her first shop, thinking of where it's going to be in future, and then all she's doing is replicating other shops. The other is thinking, I just want to survive, so let me just manage, and let me just manage, and guess what will happen, right? It may not expand yeah. to that. Now, there are other people who decide that, yes, I don't have as much money, but the mindset and the way they set up there, that they are small booker from the onset, is the foundation that makes that booker something way, way, way bigger. Now, with the advent of technology, you can actually cook in your house. You can have your booker and serve some people, but you can actually use technology where people don't know your premise and you can actually sell food to people and deliver to them. If the mindset and the starting point for you is I'm trying to solve this problem and this is the scale that is possible. You don't need to have all the money for you to start with that scale. But if you start with the mindset of that scale, you'll build it up. So what I will advise you is focus on, think of how can you add value? You know, there's a verse in scripture. I'm not a pastor, but I like to use it for everyone. Have you found a man excellent in his craft? He will stand before kings. So when we have idle time, what do we do with our idle time? Do we spend the time on social media or do we uh, spend the time actually building ourselves or learning skills? There are things you can learn with your mobile phone, right? There are lots of, so the 
the 20 hours or 10 hours you spend on WhatsApp or Instagram or what, you can use it to learn French, you can use it to learn a different skill. So there are choices. Wherever we are in life is a consequence of the choices we make or we allow uh, others to make on our behalf. So I always tell people before 21, you can blame other people for wherever you are, you are in life. Once you're over the age of 21, you can't blame anybody. It's time for you to say, okay, I want to take. So if you want to go the route of entrepreneurship, it's okay to start small, but think big and set the right processes and the right structures. You'll be amazed how big that firm that you started or that small, um, that small business that you started becomes something of skill. I know a friend who started his business selling electronics by selling phones while he was serving. He would just ask the people in the office where he was serving uh, if they needed a phone, he, would, he liked technology and all of those things. He would go to the market, find this thing, make small money. And before you know it, it's ex expanded. Today has a, a business that is over 18 billion naira turnover per annum. I'm sure there are other people who sell phones, who have been selling phones. There are some people who sell recharge cards, they have one place, they're always there. And there are some people who started from selling recharge cards and today they have a fleet of shops, right? So problems can be solved. If you solve problem at a small scale, you make small money. So the woman who cooks mamarisi will sell to 10 people. But if you have 10 mamarisi joints that serve to 10 people is a hundred people. The amount of money you make becomes more. So if you solve problems at scale, you will get more money. So I think we've got to understand the relationship with money. Money is a means of exchange of value. The higher the, the value you create, the more money you will make, right? So, and for those who are educated, it's very simple. It's easier for you because you've been given, the purpose of your education is to give you the capacity to think critically and intensely. It's why the guy who designs the mobile network will earn more money than the guy who is digging the road for you to pass the fiber optic line. The guy digging the road to pass the fiber optic line is, is, is utilizing a lot more energy. But the person who is thinking and making sure that thinking comes to happen and is guiding the guy digging the road will always earn more money. I hope that answers that. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that answers the question much more than we even expected. And something that struck me from your comment was that you don't need to be big to start. Zig, Zig, um, Zig Ziglar said that you don't need to be big to start, but you can start to be to be big. That meaning, um, I just paraphrase, I say, yeah, you don't have to be great to start, but, but you can start to be great. And there's something I want to say about uh, most people in this light is, like the question somebody asked, like, sir, are you open for mentorship? much more than the response to that most of the people we are comparing ourselves to we're looking up to becoming like in our own contemporary world we that are just trying to start off and becoming like them most of us want to start from where they are now and most of these people that we're comparing ourselves or we are learning from under their tutelage they've been in this game for more than 30 40 years but we want to start from where they are now, not knowing that there is also a place of process. I used to say this, just trust the process. If you have the end in mind, knowing that um, wherever I am today is not the end, there is an end in, in mind, you will also pass through the process and um, the result is always favorable. The, the result is always the best that you can get for yourself, if only you can trust the process. Um, another person um, asked a question, sir, he said, as someone that has risen high in the ladder, how would oh, okay? I think we lost some um, money. One thing, okay, sir. Somebody is asking in the chat room that are you open for mentorship? Do you mentor? Hello, can you hear me, sir? I can hear you now. Yes, you said somebody was asking, am I, I open? Yes, mentorship. Do you have like a mentorship? I look, I'm open to giving people advice because when people say mentorship, I, I think uh, mentorship yeah. is a very deep um, relationship, requires time. Yeah. Um, there are a number of people I mentor. So 
I, I, I can, I give feedback. I, you know, yes, I can respond if people have questions and things. Um, but right now I have a number of people I mentor, so I am not, but I'm open to sharing. It may not be as rapid. If you, if I get a question, I get a request. I, I will always make sure that I address the person or I try to, I help the person answer. Okay, so for the people that are interested, sir, do you mind sharing what and what platform they can reach out to you on? Uh, they can reach out on email. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Um, you can share my email uh, with them, my personal uh, email with them, and uh, we can take it from there. Um, on LinkedIn as well. I think I'm, I'm there. So if they just send me a request and send a note, I'm putting the note that it's through this forum, right? At least I'll be able to distinguish um, that it's from this forum. So once I accept, we can, we can take it up from there. Okay, thank you very much for that. So Akike, please, can you drop his email address? We have his permission to drop his email address and his LinkedIn profile. So for those of us that we need feedback, and this is very, very huge, sir. I really, 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 really appreciate this. Okay, the next question, sir, is, let me just um, get it right. Okay, as someone that has risen high in the ladder, and this will be the last question, we've really taken your time. As someone that has risen high in the ladder, how would you advise young graduates looking for jobs to upskill themselves? Because there's this general perception of there's no job in Nigeria, there's no job in Nigeria, but I see people getting jobs, I see people getting promoted, I see people that have been in job for years. So what would be your career advice to those, sir? Thank you. I think uh, the, 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 the jobs is just that the jobs are toughest at two levels, right? If you are trying to get into entry level position, it's quite tough to get a job because simply given the number of applicants versus the number of positions that are available, and then also at the very top, because you don't suck an MD every day. So you might have a number of people queuing or waiting or if you if you if you lose your job as an md before you get the next one they're not going to fire an md wherever he is because they want to give you a job so but in between i think there are opportunities for people to move so um i can share with look uh, it's years ago but this is basically um the mindset that i had right uh, coming out of school and going into service the mindset that I had was that <clears throat> I had nobody. I had no godfather to rely on. So I wanted to get, I wanted to be ready to compete or to get jobs on merit. And I had a group of friends. We actually were together, you know, post, after graduation, uh, during NYC. And we kind of, you know, people felt we were bragging, but we kind of felt that we said, look, we don't have anybody. So, we're not going to give any company the chance to reject us because we didn't pass the aptitude test. So one of the first things, right, during my service year, I went to my service year with my general maths books. And when I'm sitting down and I do and sitting, I would just be practicing songs. And the point for me was that if you call me, so if I went to apply, all I just said is that, please, I just want a chance to be tested. I just want a chance to be tested. If you test me. So I think whilst waiting or looking for a job, you've got to apply. People think that, look, uh, there are no jobs unless you know so. But I can tell you for all, virtually all the companies that I've worked for, you didn't need to know anybody. Guinness, British American Tobacco, Procter & Gamble, Grand Cereals, uh, where I am today, right? I didn't need to know anybody. It's simply you go through the process and you go through the process and then you make it and at the end of the day, that's... So you've got to apply yourself, you've got to be ready to compete. There are simple things, okay? Your numerical skills, numerical reasoning, that's what most companies will check for. Your verbal reasoning, you know? Don't be deceived by people who tell you that English is not our language. No, English is the official language of Nigeria and is the language of communication of business in Nigeria and with other parties. Your grammar, your English is wrong. 
you're most likely going to be cut down because when you do a verbal comprehension or verbal aptitude test, you're most likely not going to pass. I have a nephew who is in year one. Whenever he sends me an SMS or a text, I tell him your English is bad and you better start fixing it now. You're in year one. If you continue like this, by the time you graduate, you will not be able to get a job. You might run your own business. If that's what you want to do, it's fine. But you're planning to work for somebody who has a certain standard or criteria, you won't get that. So I think it's first of all, fix those basic things of your numerical ability, basic quantitative, uh, critical reasoning, thinking and problem solving. Because you're going to have to solve problems, whatever job you, you, you get into, whatever business you get into, you've got to solve. So your ability to go down to root and then to apply yourself. Personal leadership, there's something people don't take serious, courage, right? Is one of the things stopping people from growing. They're not able to say what they think, they're not able to step up and say, look, there's an opportunity, they feel bold, you know, they're not able to build confidence in themselves. Once you do that and get into the job, you've got to understand wherever you are, you must strive to be the best in what you do. If you focus again, like I, like I said, my feeling is that, you know what, I don't want to ever beg somebody for something. I don't want to be at a position where I'm begging for things. So, so what I've always said is that my safeguard, my risk mitigation about against me being fired or whatever, is that I'm just going to be so damn good at my job that other people will come to look for me. Now, the irony, looking backwards, is the last job I applied for was when I joined PNG in 1994. After that, going to work for British American Tobacco, work for Guinness, work for the, they have all come to look for me. And I know it's possible. I know it's possible. So it's, 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 but you've got to, you've got to push yourself. Now, it means that I've pushed myself to do things that other people might not uh, want to do, might not be comfortable uh, doing. I've taken roles in places, you know, I was transferred to my degree from Lagos. It felt like a punishment when I accepted it. And everybody was wondering why I accepted it without any force or anything. But guess what? I got to my degree and in four months, one of the directors of Leventis Group at that time came visiting, I was visiting my degree, and he came into the store and he said, wow, what's going on here? And the store controller told him that it's this young man that they brought from Lagos. He's the one that has changed everything in here. That night, the man went to phone head office and said, look, there's a guy here, you're wasting the guy. The next day I was transferred back to Lagos and promoted into a higher role. Now, if I didn't go to my degree because I felt it was punishment or whatever, I may not have had the opportunity. So when they say luck, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. I was fortunate to be there. I was fortunate that my work showed for itself. I was fortunate that he was surprised because he said he has never seen this before. All the while he's come to, um, to my degree. And all of a sudden, the next day, the assistant head of uh, operations flew in from Lagos to my degree. We had a chat. I didn't know what happened. Within two days, the next thing was you have been transferred back to Lagos. So some people will always want to, okay, I want to be here. I want to be here. No, I've always taken it. I said, look, you know what? You sent me here. Uh, I didn't um, try to push to go in a particular area. If you send me there, I just take it. I'll go and make the best out of it. And that has helped me one way or the other. You know, it's the mindset that I have to rely on myself, personal responsibility and accountability, that I have to rely on myself. Will other people help you? Yes, you need guidance. If you know someone who can guide you, people can tell you, but you've got to be careful of people who try to make things too, um, how, who try to make you feel that they can influence a lot of things rather than who try to help build you. You know, some of the people I mentor, sometimes they say I'm in pain in the neck, but today they are coming back to say, we're happy for what you did because they can stand on their own. I don't have to say, they're, oh, this is Alex's boy. I, you know, when somebody says your boy is here, I say, sorry, no, I don't believe you. That's the first thing that turns me off. I say, sorry, you're not the kind of person I want to work with. Or I, or I want to support, I mean, I don't want boys. I want people who are willing to stand on their own, who will end up building other people. So I'm happy to see you grow and thrive and not rely on me. 
All right. If you need any feedback, yes, we can talk. I can share. I can share my thoughts with you. But I know that you're going to take it and build on it and do something greater. So build that self-reliance. Read. Reading is the foundation of skills. But you see, reading is nothing. The world does not pay for your knowledge. The world pays for what you do with your knowledge. So if you have a degree, a PhD in catering, and you cook badly, people will not come to your restaurant after the first time they try. So it's good to read, but it's to understand that reading is to provide you the raw material that you turn into skill. Skill is when knowledge is put into practice and look for opportunities. If you don't have that job, can you volunteer? Can you do something for free for somebody so that you're learning, you're building skill, that experience will help count for you. It's not everything that is about money. And you've got to be ready to defer gratification. When I had to leave Leventis, uh, when I applied to PNG and we were going through ne negotiations, in Leventis group, I was already a branch manager. I had a house in the GRA. I had uh, official car, driver, secretary, all the works, you know, gardener, generator. I was 24 years old. And PNG, because their principal is recruiting only at entry level, they offered me a job as a sales rep. No house, no car, 15% pay cut. And I asked everyone, and nobody, but because I knew PNG from text, from magazines, from things, their principles, the way they build people, the way they build brands, I asked myself a simple question. If I don't take a risk at 24, is it when I'm 40? And what I said, look, there are some of your mates who are already in the, who are still in the university at 24. So just assume you are in final year. If it goes and it doesn't work for you, right, you can always go and find another job. So I took the pay cut. I took the loss of all those specs. I stopped from using a 504 Salunka to a Bedford truck that was carrying 300 cases. But in 18 months, I was promoted. I got back the car that I gave up. I got a salary increase, double what I was earning before by the end of that 18 months. But most of all, I had been developed, sent for training courses here, sent for training courses uh, abroad, given positions of responsibility. In five years, I had worked in Nigeria, worked in Egypt, worked in Ghana. It's those experiences that other companies that came after me are paying for. But that happened from me taking a pay cut to go and work for PNG. So if I thought about the pay, I was first child out of nine children. My father was late. I was responsible for the, this. If I thought about the pains of the salary cut, I will not have made the right investment for my future. The question I ask is in 25, 30 years time, where will I be if I don't make this call? So I think you've got to be ready to defer gratification if you want to make success of life in the long term. Like Mrs. Wright said in her first section, when you do investments, you've got to think long term. Forget this get rich to you pay 20, get 1,000, they say it doesn't work, right? There's nothing solid and sustainable that is built on not a solid foundation. So that's all I have for that question. I don't know if that answers it well. Wow, that was beyond amazing. As in, <laughs> honestly, I, I, I think you just brought this webinar home. We've been reinvented. While you were closing up on your pizza, what just came to my mind is we've heard so much about um, investing money, saving this, and you brought it home with investment in ourselves. Investment in your personal self is what yields the highest returns. So for you to even be able to get the money to invest, you must be ready to invest in yourself. We want to say on behalf of the Reed family and both nuclear and extended, we have people joining us on Facebook. We have people joining us from everywhere else in the world. Mrs. Bimbola had another appointment, so she couldn't wait till the end of the webinar, but I want to say a very big sincere thank you to both of you. And we want to assure you that we will be giving you positive feedback. You've made this very simple for us. You've given us very practical steps. Honestly, 
I was, I've been writing copiously as in, I was just, you were just blowing my mind and I'm sure it's the same with everybody. So thank you very much, sir. Please, in the chat room, can we buzz, can we unmute and say a very, very big thank you to Mr. Alex. He's a very busy person and this did not come easy. We really appreciate his simplicity and his and it's been approachable. Please, can we say thank you? Yeah, I can see totally uh, my thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We really appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My pleasure to share. And we love all Thank you. Thank you, sir. The presentation was nice. Thank you. The presentation was important. Okay, so everybody, we shot a little bit above time, but I'm sure it's been worth it. Africa is going places. We are putting Africa back on the map. For those of us in read for the external followers, November is another time, and we are going to finish the year strong. In November, we'll be having two webinars. So we said you should please indicate interest if you want to be, especially for those of you that are not members of the Reed family, if you want to be informed on some of these webinars that we have open. In the next two weeks, we are going to be having something exciting, something different. We are going to be having um, someone talk to us. I'm going to stop the live streaming now. Thank you. I guess the permission will be okay for the people on the live streaming too. So we're having somebody talk to us on how to get scholarships, foreign scholarships. There are some of us that for us to become the better version of ourselves, we need to go back to school. The school fees seems very crazy. Or you don't even know how to go about it. You don't know how to apply. School session is opening now. We are having somebody bring it home. She's in the US and she's ready to talk to us. That we are going to be having that sometime in November. Then our normal webinar is the last Saturday of November. And believe me, you don't want to miss it. You know, you heard of Mrs. Gimbola kept saying that there is so many things to talk about this to the two weeks. We are having two titans, as in, trust me, they are already ready. They are pumped up. Two titans come talk to us real time on how to make money. You do not want to miss it. So I'm just saying this to prepare your mind. And on behalf of the Reed family, the admin, the team, everybody wants to say a very big thank you. Thank you for your time and see you in November. And as we say in Reed, please see you at the top. We've had so many things. They are not going to come easy. As Mrs. Bimbola said, one of the most difficult things to do is to break habits. And that is where why a lot of us are still where we are. Please go over the notes. We had a bit of technical challenge, so we didn't start streaming early. But try and um, go over the webinar again. I'm sure you didn't hear everything. And pick one thing, start doing it, and keep at it even when you don't feel like it. That's just the difference. It doesn't seem easy. It doesn't seem right. You're tired. Keep at it when you don't feel like it. And as we say, See you at the top. My name is Tuminino Adekoju. M E. Good night. Bye bye. See you in November. Bye, Martin.